Hello, and welcome to the German New Medicine Stories podcast. May listening bring liberation and lightness to your healing journey. Please note that nothing that I or any of my guests say here is or should be misinterpreted as medical information or advice. These are personal stories, not prescriptions. So recently I started getting headaches and um, headaches is not a common symptom for me. Um, and it really started when we moved to this house. So we recently moved um, further up the coast to a different island in BC and into this house that we totally love. Um, and we've been here about two months and I would say that most evenings I have been getting headaches and it's been getting progressively worse and worse. And um, so last week I was just like very frustrated <laughs> with the headaches, you know, it's happening every evening and was just, you know, making um, like reading and doing puzzles and like the kind of thing we do in the evening, like annoying. And I was getting grumpy and, um, and they just weren't really shifting. So of course I decided to really pay attention and to see if I could figure it out. So I was lying in bed about a week ago and basically the connection that I had made is it's like something to do with light, um, with like the, the, um, the lights in our house. Um, and that, you know, the more that I had the lights on in the evening, the more that I have these headaches and, um, that I'm just being like really triggered by the lights and like really irritated by them. Like I just can't be around them. Um, and, you know, of course, for some people, maybe that's like a secondary symptom of having a headache, but it really felt like there was a direct correlation. And if you're like me, probably a lot of you have have learned a lot about um, circadian biology in the past few years. You know, if you've been on Instagram in the alternative health scene, this has kind of like been the new um, like buzz focus, I guess, Um at least for me, it was kind of like the new thing that I had learned, you know, I learned about, you know, ancestral diet and all of this, like many, many years ago. Um, and, you know, like I started learning about alternative health and like the importance of diet so young that I don't really remember what it was like to relate to food without like so much embedded meaning, <laughs> you know? Like, I don't remember what it was like when food was just food and it was something that I loved and there was no, um, there was no added meaning to it of this is good, this is bad, this causes X, this causes Y, you know, you need to eat this, we are going to be malnourished and if you eat that, it's going to make you sick. You know, I started learning about all of that stuff, I don't know, I was probably like 13 or 14, so um, I don't really remember when, when food didn't have all this um, thought jumble associated with it, but I really remember what it was like when lights were just lights for me, you know, I just, they were, there was just like no, um, really subconscious association with the lights, meaning any, anything other than, than, than positive, really. Like I turn on the light and I can read in the evening. I can, um, you know, clean my kitchen in the evening. I can just like keep living my life in the evenings or early in the mornings, lights are lights um but then you know spending time I mean not, not really like focus time this is really just like being on Instagram and um you know following different people who are speaking about this maybe I listen to a few podcasts um but just uh you know this focus on circadian biology the importance of um being outside especially like in the early morning light and in the evening and then um you know really kind of mitigating um how much like uh you know modern blue lighting I'm under in the day and then you know especially um in the evening and early morning and so all of a sudden you know I'm kind of picking up all these different um associations <laughs> about light and making the lights in my house mean something to me you know I'm creating all this meaning I'm adding all this meaning that wasn't there for me two years ago and I have noticed <laughs> that I have gotten more sensitive to light um, in that time. And it kind of all culminated very recently with these headaches that felt directly connected to the lights. And so 
you know, I don't, I, I, again, like, I don't remember what it really, the kind of process of like giving myself food sensitivities, um, by learning all the things that I did in alternative health, but, it, you know, it's been very clear for me, um, how I have essentially <laughs> like, um, kind of manufactured my own light sensitivity by the information that I had taken in. And so, um, I was lying in bed thinking about all of this and, um, was trying to pinpoint an exact moment. And it, it came to me very quickly. I remember um, the first couple of days uh, when we moved to this house, I came here first. And so I was here by myself, it would have been the evening. And I don't think I'd really like turned on the lights yet because we moved in the summer, you know, it's light, late here. And I turn on the lights and downstairs in our kitchen and they were awful. <laughs> like just the worst, like brightest, like, you know, in your face, like modern blue light there could be, you know, just so um, obnoxious and bright. And I definitely had like right there, that split second of like, that was because everything else about this house is like very sort of wholesome, you know, <laughs> but the lights do not feel that way. And I believe that I had a conflict shock in that moment, you know, subtle, but definitely there of a powerlessness conflict, which is one of the conflicts that can be associated with um, with headaches and, and migraines. And the, there was totally this feeling of powerlessness because it was like, in a second, I realized that these lights were here and I don't know how to change them. And is it even possible to change them? And like, we can't move. Like, I remember like, like this flash of like, there's nowhere to move to. Like there's very limited housing where we live. And this house is like otherwise totally perfect. And and just kind of like this image of like all these evenings and and also the <laughs> this image so you know one of the things that i have learned is that apparently you know kind of blue light quote unquote dehydrates your cells right so the image that flashes for me in that moment is like this um image of being like totally sort of um I don't know, it's like being put in an air fryer or something, like turned to this kind of like thin, dehydrated, like crepe material, <laughs> you know? But like, that's what's happening to my cells and to my tissues when I'm under this light. And oh my God, I'm going to be under this light even more because we're entering into winter and the lights are on more and like that, like all of this in a flash moment. And, you know, I was, I was surprised by the lighting and I didn't have a solution and I would just, uh, definitely also felt, you know, the emotional isolation in the moment. And so anyways, that happened probably like two months ago when we first moved here. And, um, and at that point in time, you know, the lights weren't on very often because again, it was summer. And the reason that these headaches have gotten worse, I'm not sure if I mentioned, mentioned that already, but they are getting kind of like worse and worse is because of course the days are getting shorter and shorter here. And so the lights are coming on earlier. <laughs> and um, I have just like really noticed and like, it's been kind of like going on out like some some conscious awareness but like that night I really thought over it of like how much like every time the lights are on in the evening I have to turn on a light like I just feel so there's like all of this background um kind of thought going on about the light's bad for me it's hurting me it's not good for me um yeah like that <laughs> this is in essence kind of poisoning me this light and um just all these different, um, yeah, thoughts about, uh, the light and that, that same sense of like powerlessness of like, well, I want to, <laughs> like, I'm not going to stop my, I can't just sit here in silence from like 5 PM onwards, you know, um, I want to do my puzzle. <laughs> I want to read my book, but, um, but these lights are on and just feeling like, you know, kind of get all like squinty and just like feeling so almost attacked by these lights. And so I was thinking about that when I was lying in bed, putting all these dots together and realizing that I've spent quite a bit of time like unraveling um, my beliefs about food and, um, you know, just like really um, uh, throwing in the garbage, <laughs> like a lot of what I have learned about food and, and food as the cause of disease and all of this. And that I hadn't really taken the time or definitely hadn't at all taken the time to really iron out um, 
this, uh, my, my beliefs about, uh, light. So I could just feel that kind of like, um, panicky sort of like incoherence feeling and, and thoughts about light where it, I hadn't really taken the time to, um, to unravel them and to really think it through. <laughs> and so I just, you know, I, I stayed up late lying there thinking about it all and just thinking, well, what do I know to be the cause of disease? At this point, I really do believe that the cause of disease is conflict shock. And that's not an intellectual belief for me at this point. You know, I just have dozens and dozens of personal examples of that and have now witnessed it in, you know, so many other people um, in such a direct, coherent, clear way. It makes complete sense to me, um, you know, and I, and I no longer think food is the cause, but here I am kind of with this like lingering discomfort around, um, you know, modern lighting. And so, you know, just ask myself, like, is it true? Do I think that light causes uh, symptoms? No, I, I don't. Do I think that like being outside um, is super nourishing and like feels great and I love getting up for the sunrise and like I wish it stayed uh, lighter late where I live in the winter for sure. Do I think that all the modern lighting is like super uh, healthy for us? No. Um, and then I also got to thinking, I was like, okay, well, so I'm, I remember like different people sharing different studies and stuff about, um, you know, like, I don't know, disease rates around things like Wi-Fi or things like light. And um, I just like started to, to question them. Well, one, I don't actually know anything about these studies. I haven't read any of them myself. I'm just like taking this off of people that, you know, I respect on Instagram um, for one. And then I was also even just thinking like, okay, so we see a relationship between like uh, Wi-Fi or um, light exposure in the evening and disease. And of course, one explanation of that is, I mean, there could just be, it could be com completely unrelated, right? It could just be um, that that is true. It could also be that there actually is um, a causative factor of the light or of the Wi-Fi. Could also be though, you know, I have to think, well, what are people doing in the evening with their lights on? <laughs> what are people doing in the evening or throughout the day with access to to Wi-Fi? And, um, you know, I know personally uh, how much um, Instagram specifically, but like, you know, being on the internet has created different conflicts for me. I know, you know, like what there, there people are having experiences in this uh, while using the internet, while having their lights on late into the evening, you know, staying up to watch Netflix until like 2 a.m. or something. Um, and so anyways, I just started to... Um, ask different questions and sort of like smooth out these this thing that felt like th this sort of tension and this incoherence in me and just really reflecting on this on this um on this question of like you know is it possible to be healthy in a modern world and how much the alternative health world the holistic you know quote unquote holistic health world has really like programmed us to feel so weak and to feel um, like everything's coming to get us. And that unless you're under kind of constant vigilance, constant protection, you know, you're just not going to be healthy in this world because there's so much, um, so much that's out to get you, you know, that's just like eating away at your cells or poisoning you or whatever. And um, uh, yeah, and just kind of, <sighs> thinking all of this through and like what do I what do I believe <laughs> when I actually take all the kind of like uh the the plethora of Instagram influencers in my head like what what do I know from my own personal experience um I really I think it is possible for me to be healthy in this world you know even with the EMF even with the light even with glyphosate even with M trails, whatever, you know, um, like I, I believe, uh, that, that those things aren't the cause. And so I can create health in this context.
you know, even under lights, I can be healthy. And, um, and just really reflecting about how light never used to affect me at all, at all. But since I started learning about the potential impacts of light on my health, I have now become sensitive to it because it's in my awareness. There is now psychic, you know, subconscious um, meaning and association around the light. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I found, I felt a lot of peace. I felt like I had just sort of like uh, cleaned up a room in my psyche where I'd been like hoarding all this stuff <laughs> and I got to choose like what I wanted to keep and what I wanted to throw away and I think about that analogy or maybe a different version of that analogy a lot I think of like how much time I've spent on Instagram and probably anybody listening to this just like hoovering up like so many different ideas about health life money relationships everything just like all these different tidbits and until recently, I had like never gone into the garbage of my <laughs> of my, my like mental Instagram Hoover and like clean it out, you know. And so all of that is just existing inside me. And I've had to like really go through this con conscious process of like, you know, maybe about 10 of the things that I have that are in my uh, that I've Hoovered up are like really useful gems that have like really changed my life. And a lot of it just dusty garbage that has really has kept me trapped in fear at different points and actually created more issues than it solved and I can choose to just like put those aside and and um and feel peace <laughs> so uh so yeah that all happened you know while I was lying in bed before I went to sleep maybe I spent like 40 minutes thinking all this through I don't know and I, I was like well Maybe that's it. Maybe I have uh, have resolved this conflict. We will find out tomorrow night. And lo and behold, tomorrow night, like my whole, I just noticed like my, I, and I'd also spent that evening before it got dark, Matthew and I, uh, we we walk most evenings together. And I like kind of processed this all out loud with him and, and told him, you know, what I had been um, sort of seeing and bringing awareness to, which I think really helped like anchor it in. And then that night, I mean, I had a completely different experience of the light. <laughs> like it just, and it wasn't like I was really super thinking about it in the moment, but it felt so much softer. It didn't, I didn't have all of this, like I see the light and then immediately there's like a flash thought of like, this isn't good for me. Um, and I just felt at peace with the lights on <laughs> in our house and it's okay. I'm still healthy. Um, I'm not doing anything bad by, you know, having lights on at 7 8 p.m at night and um no headaches no headaches at all that night the next day at about like 2 p.m or something I noticed that I was getting that little kind of like fuzzy in the brain headache feeling and I was like what happened and I and immediately I could see what it, what it was I was I had been sometimes I like work from my bed in the day and I was, uh, I think, watching, I don't know, some some uh, class that I'm taking, like some recording, and is in bed watching it. And I had had, I had accidentally, or maybe it was left on from the morning, like a light, one, it's like a few different lights that are built into the ceiling in our bedroom. And I, the one to, to my left was on, and I had, it was me going on, like these thoughts were there. I wasn't paying attention to them and attention to them until I noticed that I had the symptoms. So then I knew that I had stepped on the track and I had there, this light had been on and it had kind of, it's been annoying me. Like it just felt like, oh, it's, it's coming at me. And like, I, I'm feeling like it's bad. It's the middle of the day and I got this light on. And so I just like spent some minutes, I like turned off the lights and, um, you know, made the conscious connection made peace with the light, <laughs> kind of went through the same process of like, you know, what do I actually know to be true? And what do I really think about the lights myself, you know? And um, yeah, I think the headache went away in five or 10 minutes or something. And yeah, it's been, I think a week now since, um, since this connection and no fuzzy, painful, pounding head feeling at all. So yeah, I really, um, I'm so grateful <laughs> that, that I had this symptom and the opportunity to, 
um, make peace with fluorescent lighting and um, just like uh, ground even deeper into um, the, the biological laws and to see, you know, just another layer of how, um, of how much this like super kind of well-intentioned um, education around certain things um, in the alternative health world, like creates, <laughs> creates the perfect context for conflict <laughs> uh, in our psyches and just, um, yeah, is, is so ripe for actually creating symptoms, creating fear, creating things to feel afraid of that weren't there, right? Creating new monsters for people. So, um, yeah, I really appreciate uh, that learning. I'm really glad that I don't have headaches in the evening anymore. And I think hopefully this story will be enlightening. So, yeah, just really uh, an invitation to pay attention to to everything that you take in and and consider how it um, how it has you know, either strengthened your ability to feel at peace, strengthened your ability to feel resourceful, to feel healthy no matter what, to feel on top of things, to feel, you know, that you have a high emotional threshold or whether a lot of what you've taken in, especially around health stuff has actually, you know, lowered your ability, <laughs> decreased your ability to, to feel robust and to feel safe, to feel healthy, to feel solid, to feel impenetra impenetrable, no matter what is going on. Um, or if it's just kind of like adding all these different um, uh, things that feel like invasions upon your health um, that then kind of translate to sensitivities and symptoms down the road.